What's good, everybody? We are back with some more Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, last time I ended off, we were doing the second like poem writing piece of work, whatever we're doing. So I'll see you guys when we get back to that because I didn't save at that point. All right, guys, we are back at the second poem. I still like Yuri the best, so I'm going to try to impress her. Let's go with um, desire or agonizing, maybe. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's do this. Um, or uh, melancholy. Oh, fuck me. Oh, uh, one, one out of twenty is not not that not that bad. Um, um, boop. I just want to see what that one. Okay, I, I kind of assumed, but I just wanted to see. Daydream. Oh god damn it! I'm I'm losing myself. Peaceful. Oh shit. Fuck me. Fuck me. All right, let's just fear. How? Why does Sayori like all of these things? Um, I guess I don't. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. I thought uh, I thought I knew um, these characters well, but uh, I guess not. Oh, actually, never mind. I, I I still got it. I still got it. Tenacious philosophy, intellectual entropy. Okay, I don't know what that word means. I'm not gonna lie. I don't like literature. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual the usual scene greets me. Still can't read, by the way. Uh, wait, what voice that give her? God damn it, I, I already forgot. Hi, Vin. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which... I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? I wonder why he's uh, not interested in buying her a snack. Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Uh, I knew it. I could see right through you, Sayori. What, she can't pay for it or what? That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought, bought a snack before coming to the club. Ah, this guy, he's smart. Then in this game, he's, he's, a little, he's a little smarty pants, isn't he? So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. What? I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Vin to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't, don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibility, responsibly afford. Yeah, you, yeah, Sayori, get a job, why don't you? And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh, uh, I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Revolution? Yeah, I was about to say. Retribution. That. Still coming from- Oh. Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Well, that's what Freud said, so... <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... 
You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. Yeah, you're right. I'm not gonna lie. So I did trick Betsuki into making them. She's actually pretty smart. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, she's a... Uh, obviously knows how to get her way. You know what I mean? Not like that. Hold on. Hold on. Not like that. You know exactly what I'm saying. Okay, guys. Come on now. Come on. Give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> what the hell? Oh. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A, a cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! You know... You know what, Sayori? I'll let you have that one. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Uh -huh. Nats Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori cla suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. Yeah, chew with your mouth closed. Come on. I bit my tongue. <laughs> I just gave Sayori Natsuki the same poison and I. Oh, god damn it. They're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Oh my gosh, Sayori. Yeah, why do you. <clears throat> yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, so, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Mm. Suddenly, er, Sayori suddenly leads down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Either these, these, uh, these two are lesbos or they have a really, like... Older sister, younger sister dynamic. Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Hmm, I wonder why. Eh, where's Monica anyway? I have a feeling that, uh, that Sayori is the least immature, or most immature out of all of them. Good question. Have any any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open and it's Monica! Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah, that makes no sense though. You have heard the bell ring at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Girl after my own heart. I love, uh, I love the piano. I took, um, I played piano, took lessons for about two years, and then I stopped after I moved states because um, finding a new piano teacher uh, was a hassle and very expensive. I kind of wish I kept playing it though. It would be really nice. And I like music now, so you know, there's that. Could uh, practice my musical gifts still. I mean, I bought a electric guitar and I am uh, trying to get into singing. So, I mean, there's that. But anyways, enough of my yapping. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't really. 
I kind of just started recently. Yeah, me too, with uh, all the electric guitaring. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Same, same, same thought here. I don't want to... I was going to do song covers, but I mean, you kind of have to, like, be good at them before, you know, you put them out on the internet. I mean... Even the really good song covers that people do, like, don't get that much attention. So if you do a mediocre or a bad one, it's gonna be yikes. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Vin. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. How about we start a band, all five of us, huh? That that, that would be kind of that would be kind of cool. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Yeah, I'm sure that will happen. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished the her entire cookie. I mean, girls gotta eat, right? <laughs> girls gotta eat. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared to the closet. Why is she always in that closet, bro? Hey, Yuri. Eh? Okay, so we did well. Yuri likes our poem or whatever we wrote. So, yes, let's go. Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. <laughs> betrayal! Betrayal! Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Oh, wait, never mind, never mind. We're in there, we're in there, we're in there. Ah, uh, that's the case. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? This girl loves her tea. I, I respect it. Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make re my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. I think I think tea, reading, and like some peaceful music, like like what they have in the game here, that that'd be pretty pretty nice way to spend time. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. You guys read, and if so, uh, like would would that sound appealing to you? Because. Honestly, I don't even read, and that sounds pretty, pretty relaxing to me. I guess it's always, it's just because, like, I don't know, I feel like I'm always, like, jumping from one thing to the next, and I don't really have, like, that much time to just sit down and relax. But I guess this is kind of my, like, sit down and relaxation time for the day. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electro electric kettle. kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Isn't that kind of how she speaks as well? I mean, maybe like once she gets excited, she starts scrambling, but I feel like that's how they set up her character. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Uh, we're just... Yuri was going to mix up tea, so... I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Well, you know... It, it doesn't hurt to have some company, you know? I mean, everything everything's better with uh, somebody at your side, right? Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Vin in club activities? Okay, Yuri standing your ground. My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hm. Then let's go, Vin. Ah. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow water break. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so... 
irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. Damn, my boy is a complete doormat, bro. He, <laughs> he's just like me. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. I mean, she's not really, she's just asking a question. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Then, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. That's true. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? F friend, you say? Um. Yuri lifts her head. Then, I really like being friends with you. Ah. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to try to help Yuri feel better. That's a... Uh, Pretty nice of you, anime then. I'm assuming my character's, you know, anime style, so I'll call, I'll call my alter ego in the game anime then. Anyway, uh, yeah, shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain. Oh, they, this is Japan. I was about to say, oh, that's nasty. But if it's if it's in Japan, it's probably clean. Here in the states, definitely not. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Vin, do you like oolong tea? Oh my god, yes, oolong tea. It's different. Oh my god. That's, that is one, like, I don't drink tea very often, but, but oolong tea is like one of my go-tos. Oh my god, it's so good. You got, if you guys do not, have not ever tried it, you got it. it, it it's amazing. It will, it will change your, it will change your perspective on life, I'm telling you. Ah, uh, yeah. Anything's fine. Okay, well, my character does not share the same enthusiasm as I do, but whatever. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? Well, I think putting effort into things that, you know, you, you, you like for other people is, is always a good gesture. <laughs> In that case, you'll only even be more impressed. I said that completely wrong. <laughs> ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns, it, it turns out, it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Vin. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Vin, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, again, if this was America, that would be completely disgusting. But I mean, if this is Japan, it's probably probably clean and uh, orderly. Eh, yeah, why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh yeah, because they're Asian, so a lot of people are short, so the desks are probably made for short people. That makes sense. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my, uh, my, your posture, right? I always hunched over like that while reading. Yes, I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Okay, I didn't notice this when I was playing, but are they making a sex joke here? I, I'm actually so confused what this whole thing was with Yuri and her back pain. Because, like, I don't know why she overreacted like that, like, her reading posture wasn't the reason why she had back pain. I don't even know, bro. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. Isn't it? Wait, look at the window over there. Isn't it like sunny? Wouldn't the chocolate melt in your bag? Shit, I, I, I don't ask questions. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. 
Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. Okay, girl, I see you, I see you, I see you. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Okay, so my boy, he's a, he's a little fucking soy boy, I guess, because this is really not that difficult. Well, actually, I guess I can't say anything because I've never been in, uh, in a position like this, so I guess I won't judge. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand, that's not even hold that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to make sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. Notice a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup in between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Are you sure? Well... If I touch it, it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Am I... <laughs> Prediction. Am I gonna, like, like, break off a piece and, like, feed it to her? Because if so, that's, uh... Whew! That's, that's, uh, crazy. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have a, any harder of a time from reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. I... I'm not a person that can just like hard focus in on something like that like like I I want to but I don't know I'm always thinking about like a million different things or I don't know it's, it's really hard for me to like hyper focus into one thing but I feel like when I am hyper focused on something it just like everything else just completely fades. it's actually a pretty nice feeling to have I'm not gonna lie then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri she doesn't even look away from the book. She, she simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. Well, I tell you guys, I'm master predictor. But that means I can't stop there. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Oh, my bad. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did, did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, then, sorry. I guess I should have done that. Ah, uh, that's... Well, y you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? Uh, I, I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. I mean, I feel like I, I... I feed my friends sometimes. Like, I don't know if that makes me gay or not, but like, you know. If, if they want to bite, just... You feel me? I feel like that's not even that bad. But I mean, obviously it's different in this case, because you know... That's all it was. Yeah, then... You don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breasts. I raise my arm. Ah, just like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel, I, I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. What? Ah. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Vin, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Oh, I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling that this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. I feel like we'll bring it up eventually. Who should I show my poem to first? 
Well, I mean, I already spent all that time with. Or actually, should I make it true to the story where like I kind of the situation kind of happened and then I kind of want to move away from it, so I talk to everybody besides you. You know, what? I'll do that. I think that's more fitting to the story. I'll, I'll go to Monica first. How about that? Hi, Goodman. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in the head of hers? I feel like people who don't talk a lot or like are just naturally more shy. It's really interesting when you actually get them to open up and like express their thoughts because like like most of the time I'm just like, whoa, I never thought like this person would think this way or like share this perspective on on like these things. I don't know. T leave a comment if you guys uh, feel the same way as me. I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely must have understood. Ah, calm down, I'm just kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Let's go, guys. Save me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is that an Avenged Sevenfold reference? Holy shit, too. I love that song so much. Save me. Gotta be probably in my top 10, top 15 favorite songs of all time. Save me is such a good song. But anyways. <laughs> Save me. The colors. They won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Math reference, let's go! Like playing chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of the meaningless. Load me? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Uh, I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. I think, yeah. It's just kind of, it's kind of a thing I never really seen before, I guess. I, I think I like it, honestly. Like, I don't know. So, I feel like poems like that or like things like that, you kind of have to like derive the meaning yourself and it's like kind of like a, like, I don't know. I feel like 10 different people can have like 10 different interpretations of it and that's pretty cool. I kind of like playing with the space on my paper, choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote those the lines uh, really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. I did not get that myself, but uh, now that she's explaining to me, I, kinda, I can kind of see it. It's still hard for me to tell what it is about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't, is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Ooh, let's get into it. That last tip was really good, so let's see what we have here. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Oh, let me heed her advice and save the game right now. 
When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or so when something unexpected may happen. Did she just break the fourth wall already? Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alright. Next up. Let's throw in a little curveball here. Let's talk to Natsuki. I think out of the four girls, I think my favorite is Yuri, then it's Sayori, then it's Monica, then it's Natsuki. That's my that's my top four. But I don't really think Natsuki is like an asshole. I think she's just kind of like snarky. And like, you know, people are into that. Not me, I guess, because I, I said that she was fourth. Hmm. I like your last one better. Uh, really? Well, yeah, I could tell you are a little more daring with this one. But you're not really good enough for that yet. It fell flat. Damn. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I mean, your the best criticisms, criticism you'll receive is the harshest one. So, I mean, it's not really that crazy, uh, her saying that. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning just by using annoying and complicated language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. Yuri's head over heels for all this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Ha! Making your reader look so hard for all this deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. That's true. I feel like sometimes, like, when people write stuff, like, and they're, like, trying to make it super meaningful, it's just, like, you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're just doing this bullshit, and then, like, it tricks, like, academics into being, like, oh, this is great, great work, and they just derive some, like, completely meaningless bullshit out of it. I, I don't know. So I do I do understand her. I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Yep, I, I guess so. Anyway, here's my poem. Maybe you'll learn something. Oh, well, this is a lot longer than her last poem. Her last poem was like five fucking lines. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me and took me to the nurse. I tried to not let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. And that's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Spiders are very important, okay? They catch all the bugs in your house. Very cool. Thumbs up for spiders. Except, um... Those really big creepy ones. They, they can die. But more spiders pretty cool man not bad right it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's yesterday's was way too short i was just warming up i hope you didn't think that was the best i could do no of course not anyway the message is pretty straightforward in this poem i doubt i have to explain it sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies it helps realize that people oh my goodness it helps people realize how stupid they're being like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is, is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people- Oh, do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my- That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. I like how each of the characters, like, they- they Obviously, they have their own personalities and writing styles, but like, they, their tips and like how they uh, give advice to, you know, your character is like, derived from their writing styles. It's actually pretty cool. And- all of their, like, advice is valid. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid uh, if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. What do you guys think my guilty pleasure is? It's, uh, it, it'd probably be pretty easy to tell, to be honest. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people need, really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of people, other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. True. 
Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Alright, Natsuki. And let's go with Sayori. Hold up, a water break because my throat hurts. Ooh, I like this one, Vin. It has some nice feelings in it. Uh, I'm glad. Does that mean that it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. Yeah, me either. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I can also relate to that. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole, this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thoughts? Uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. That, there's a word for that, right? Probably. What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Yeah, she seems pretty happy and upbeat as a person. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give that rain cloud a little hug and make it a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is? Maybe I'm getting ex better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Vin. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Alright, let's get into this. <laughs> Bottles. I pop off my scalp. Like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a place where I keep all of my dreams. Little balls of sunshine. All rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach aside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. In bottles, all in a row. My collection makes lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes the bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers gr go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against a tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That was definitely bittersweet. Holy crap. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Did I tell you yesterday that I was going to write the best poem ever? I actually really like that one. That one was actually pretty, pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Like, the, the first one she did was just, like, kind of just, like, meaningless, like, but, like, just happy and goofy. This one, I actually really like this one a lot. Like, at first it kind of started out that way, but then it, like, gradually drifted into something more sad. It was actually pretty, pretty cool. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings lately. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. 
Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You got pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a bad habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. Nah, yeah, Sayori is definitely the most relatable character out of them all. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes me hard for me makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Last one, my baby girl, Yuri, what's good? Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Finn, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick on, up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I, I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she, she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying that you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. I think if um, you want to do something like, like a job in a creative field, you got to just... I mean, it's a lot harder than it sounds because I mean, I only started my channel recently, but like uh, you got to just start, you know, you just got to start putting stuff out there because I learned that people don't really care if the first ones like the first videos or poems in this case are bad because they'll be like if they like like the idea you've painted or like the vision that you have, they'll stick with you and they'll be like and they'll be on, on your side cheering you on as you improve, you know, the aspects of your creative, uh, you know, work, whatever you're doing. So you just gotta get, for, for all the people who want to be creatives out there, you just gotta get your work out there. You know, I mean, how are people gonna discover you? How are people gonna, you know, find your work if you never post it, right? Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Aww. The raccoon. It happened in the dead. Ow, my throat hurts. Uh, uh, uh. Here, let me let me do, redo that. <laughs> the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that the that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its place, phase and reflect, reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The si that very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken a following to me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. I'm not gonna lie, even though I like Yuri the best as a character, I think Sayori's poems are my favorite out of out of the four. Um, 
I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday. But I do like this one. This one, this one's definitely... I like Sayori's and Yuri's than Monica's than Natsuki's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know it's, if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. Me either. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem to, as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I could take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So sometimes I enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About somebody being... Someone being ridiculed for such a strange interest? Eh? She... She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... She's right. Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... Well, that's interesting. To me, she seems like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. I think... Like, face... At face value, yeah, she would, but like, deep down, she's like, doesn't really care, you know? Because like, I mean, on, on the surface, she just kind of seems like an asshole, but like, she's just kind of snarky. That's her personality, right? But I suppose that's my fault for judge judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. Uh, don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to express embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, Ben. That, that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling, and you're to thank for that. It's Nothing really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness, timidness seems to disappear. Pretty cool. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone can come sit at the front of the room. I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll en just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with the last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? I think Monica has the most normal voice out of all of them, I'm not gonna lie. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but does it, that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Uh, um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's... That's a river, river bad. Uh, oh god. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're going also going to let up. Hmm, we're also going to let up. <laughs> focus then. We're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's so putting it all on the the posters in case anyone else wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been calling a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you, do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared the poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. 
It's a lot. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should give our best. We're the only one responsible. Only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, bring me the horizon, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others to inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it, if all it takes is standing up, is sitting in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks that Natsuki had... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. <sighs> okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone's expected faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, uh, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. Bro, we have like two to choose from. Uh, actually, I guess they've written poems, they just never shared it with anybody, right? We're going to practice reciting, reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone else feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. Unlike mine, because my voice is nasally as shit, I need some more water. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something that she's done before, or is she simply a natural? Probably both, she seems pretty extroverted and popular, so... I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayuri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri gla anxious, anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Whoa! Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets too absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in the, its structure that, that she enunciates, enunciates with perfect timing. Holy fuck, if I had to read in front of people, I think I'd shoot myself, because holy shit. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she's a... Woo! Yuri! Yes! That's my baby girl! I mean, uh... Woo! Go Yuri! It's not that we didn't want to applaud to her, but we were so caught off guard, we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds up the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks through the podium. P 
po podium. Goddamn. This one's called. Th this one's called my meadow. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, sorry, I giggled. <laughs> so you already. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think about it. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori s meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Vin liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm gonna pick a, make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Vin. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Vin lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. Yeah, true. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I re receive applause anyway. Sorry if I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more uh, about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This, the poem is called, it's called, Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Hmm, anyway, the poem's called Jump. Jump, jump out the house, jump out the house, jump out the Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little un... Enthused? Oh, oh, like unenthusiastic, okay. Her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well while spoke out loud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better make me not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you, you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you have all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before, before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to write, recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting all this effort for the club. In all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up. But let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue doing that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day! I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it, if it's for the sake of the club. 
and impressing Monica. I thought you wanted to impress Yuri. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a li little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Ben, you don't have to say it. Whatever, whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a couple, a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Yeah, I feel like, because because I don't know much about this game. I just know that a lot of people are like, dude, it's fucked up, but it's a really good story. So I feel like this, like, the like whole mood of this game is like, it's just like this right now. Like, like it's kind of going down and it's just going to fall off a cliff eventually. Maybe that festival. I don't know. But today, Sayori... Oh yeah, I already read that. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Oh, we... Okay. I think uh, we're, we're almost at the cliff. We're almost at the cliff. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. So... Oh, man. This is... Okay. What I would really do... Is walk home with Yuri. Come on now. Come on now. But, I, I feel like... I'm pretty loyal to my friends. And Sayori seems like a really good friend. But sometimes you gotta get, you gotta be in your bag, you feel me? Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Uh, you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even po any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore. You know? Need you. Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen that time. Oh, baby. I think... I think that's a good place to end off on. I've been recording for an hour. But I think if I keep this up, this... Because I have no idea how long this game is. Uh, I know Cub Scouts, his series was six episodes long. And I'm waiting to finish this game so I can watch that. But... I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm adding my own thoughts to everything and that's like slowing it down. I mean, I know that's what's slowing it down, but I don't really feel like just reading it and like just having that be the video is like much is any good. Um, I kind of want to inject my own thoughts into it, but yeah, that's going to be um, it for this video. I'm really enjoying this game so far, um, even though it is kind of like slow uh, at the start like i said i have a feeling it's gonna just teeter off a cliff and i do like stories like that and it's been pretty pretty peaceful you know uh like i said i like the music i like the four characters are really really well fleshed out they actually give really good writing advice if that's something you guys are into um and the story has been has been very very good so far even though it, it is a little bit slow uh slower than what i'm used to it's still really good Excuse me and i'm really enjoying it so yeah there's that uh hope you guys will tune in for next episode or next video i guess and i'll see you guys later peace out